So welcome to another video sequence, this time uh, looking at the submit process in a little more detail. We were able to use the uh, SOAP UI tool earlier on to test the basic functionality, but now we're going to dig in a little bit more detail to find out how the example workflows um, that are provided in the zip file work and where the particular things are that you will need to focus on to go beyond those examples into something a little more um, industrial. So here we have um, a contact called Percival Proctor and we're going to use this contact as the basis for much of our work. So to begin with let's um, take a look at this uh, contact in a little more detail because we're going to need a couple of these fields later on. Currently the middle name, sorry, the, or it's called middle name, but it's got a label that says middle initial. The middle initial is blank. Um, this is going to be a focus field for us. We're going to talk about the middle name field quite a lot. Uh, and that's that field there, simply because it's an easy to access field. The next thing I want to mention to you is that the standard workflow that you get in the zip file the chances are you're going to want to do, at least for your early examples, quite a bit of surgery. For example, there's a bunch of uh, steps in this submit workflow up here in the top right hand corner um, that, if I can move it across, there we go, that all relate to saving contact attachments. So if you have no intention of using contact attachments, you should or could eliminate those steps without any fear of failure. Um, because you simply don't need them. So in my case, I've done that. I've taken away those. And equally, you will need to make changes to the update the response step, perhaps. This step is responsible for pushing messages back to OPA. And as well as changing this step, it is very likely that you are going to want to change the behavior of the update contact step, um, so that makes two steps that you're going to either have to edit or in probably in reality or even maybe going to have to add further steps, particularly in the matter of updating Siebel, um, particularly so update contact, but also update the response, as well as eliminating some unnecessary steps if you're not going to deal with uh, um, attachments. So that's quite a lot of work you'll need to do. If we take a look at a, another version that I have here, this is a much later version um, that I've been editing for the purposes of this uh, online course. Um, this is a good example. So as you can see in the top right hand corner, I've eliminated all that stuff about attachments. And update the response has changed just for the purposes of education. I'll, I'll talk to you in that, about that in a minute. You'll notice that the field name referenced isn't middle name. It now says alias. And I've added a new step called read property set in front of update the contact because the likelihood is that uh, you're going to need to do some extra work to read what has been received and process it in Siebel. So um, going back to our uh, project. Um, I mentioned a moment ago that I wasn't using middle name. Well, I'm still loading middle name and submitting middle name. So I'm mapping in and mapping out. So data is coming in from Siebel and data is going back to Siebel. So middle name is going to be the target of my update. Uh, the message from Siebel, you'll notice, is referencing alias load after submit. Load after submit basically means that when the submit response is sent back from Siebel to OPA, the alias variable or the alias attribute, to give it its proper name, will be updated. So we'll see it in the OPA interview. For example, I'm just using alias here as a placeholder to send a message back to OPA. It's important to realize that sending a message back as part of submit sends it back to OPA. It doesn't do anything to Siebel, which explains why in your workflow you actually have two steps. One for managing the response that gets sent back to OPA and one for managing the update that actually happens in Siebel. Going back to our workflow now and looking at the update, the response, you'll notice that I reference the alias which is this attribute from OPA, and I populate it with a bunch of text, which is simply a message to say, hey, the submit was successful. It's quite common to want to show a message in your OPA project to show the user that the data that uh, has been processed by Siebel has been processed successfully. 
the read property set step is a business service because it's highly likely that the res the response you receive from oh, sorry the the request you receive from OPA will contain lots of information and some of that information you will want to push into the Siebel database. Say, for example, you want to update the middle name. So typing in a middle name here means that the middle name, when I click the Submit button, will be part of the data sent to Siebel. I will need to pass that find the middle name and push it into the Siebel database field. So in this case, I'm bringing the input is my request from OPA and I'm going to pass the request, find the value. You'll also notice here that after clicking submit, I see the message that was mapped in update the response to alias and I see the text displayed. So this is an example of using the load after submit functionality. It just simply shows it up in the interview. So in summary, I'm going to use alias to display a message in the OPA project, but I'm actually going to use middle name to find the data that was entered in the interview and push it into the Siebel database. I've created a couple of extras here to give you an example of the sort of thing that you're going to be receiving from OPA. So this is a um, save request, and you'll notice that the first name and middle name is there, including the new value that I typed in for you just a few seconds ago. So I'm going to have to pass this property set, find that value, and then stick it into the business component in Siebel. So as you can see, it's quite a decent structure, which means that the most common solution for finding elements in this property set is to create a business service. Uh, there are other ways of doing it, of course, but for this example, I've created a very simple business service. And in that business service, without going into too much detail, I've made it very obvious how this is going to work um, because I haven't hidden any of the nasty complexity. You'll see a line 45 that says inputs get child 0, 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 get child 1, and so on. So I navigate down the hierarchy of the property set in order to extract the text val property in order to get to the value. Once I've got that value, I will then use set field value and write record to drop it into the Siebel database. I've removed, um, or I should remove rather, the reference to the fixed OPA fan, which was the example which was displayed in the original workflow, because I don't want to keep uh, repeating uh, the, the job title is of somebody is OPA fan. So you're going to want to delete that straight away once you've uh, got yourself uh, a business service working. And as you can see in my uh, later version, I have the read property set business service. And then in the final step, um, I have no reference to the um, job title. However, I do have a reference to the middle name and a property called OPA middle name, which is actually the output from my business service which means that if I go to my contacts and look at Percival Proctor, let's go to the more info, you'll notice that the middle name now has the new value. So the business service passed out the uh, new value and dropped it into the um, Siebel business component field. In summary, therefore, in any kind of submit workflow, there are really two things to worry about. The first one is making sure a message goes back to OPA. The second one is saving the data in Siebel.